question we often get asked from swimmers and you know, athletes is, what paddle is best for me? Now there's so many different paddles, and I've got a few different varieties here, but there's so many different paddles in the market that uh, it's really impossible to figure out which one is best. But I want to go through some of the kind of, some of the ones I recommend, some of the ones I use mostly in my swim trip. But the key thing with swim paddles is getting the right size. So I've got a few different ones here. And I'll explain each of these individually, but uh, sometimes what you see is like, you know, paddles like this that are almost like dinner plates. Uh, huge paddles, you know, say compared to my hand, it's much, much bigger. Now they are great for building strength. The downside is that they're so big that you need so much power and strength to be able to get them through the water. So what you often find is it actually slows your stroke down too much. So yeah, you build a lot of strength, but at the same time you're risking a lot of injury and actually you're just going to potentially ingrain bad technique. So uh, I would be really cautious about too big a paddle, um, unless you're physically really strong and you're used to using big paddles. But I wouldn't certainly recommend for most people in triathletes usually aren't physically strong enough in the water to, to really benefit from that just because it's going to affect your stroke more. So the, the gate down straight away. Uh, then you've got paddles like this, so obviously like Speedo is probably one of the most popular uh, paddle on the market. Again, it's quite a simple thing as you strap yourself into it. Now one of the issues sometimes with strapping yourself into the paddle is that um, if you have slight maybe flaws in the technique, so maybe you press down at the top of the stroke or you press out to the side at any point with like crossovers, when you're strapped into the paddle, all that's going to do is just allow you to increase the surface area of your hand, which means you're going to put a lot more load in the shoulder and the neck area. And it's where a lot of people get tight, is just into these areas, because when they're using paddles, they're, they're just getting more leverage through them. So you've got to be careful with that as well. That's why coming into the kind of three main paddles that I'm going to talk about is the, uh, the finish range. So finish kind of have quite a nice couple of ranges of paddles. And with all of them, you're never actually strapped in fully, so your hand is still quite free to move in its natural movement and allows you to develop good technique by giving you that kind of feedback. So we're going to kind of go into each of them. So we're going to start here with the Finnis Freestyler. So we're starting here with a paddle called the Finnis Freestyler. Obviously it's quite a kind of unique shape, shaped like an arrowhead, and there's a deliberate reason for that. It's just got one hook here, the whole purpose of that is it's just your middle finger that it's supported on. And the whole purpose of this paddle is really about kind of streamlining hand and getting that hand out at the right angle and making sure that you kind of spear into the water. And something that we always try and teach swimmers about the importance of spearing their hand and like getting that hand through the water uh, in the right position. So to start with this, you just move your middle finger through, pull it so it's kind of somewhat tight. Same on the other side. Now what always happens with this paddle when people start using these for the first time is that they're instinctively they want to hold on to the sound. When you start to do that, you're defeating the purpose of the paddle. The reason that people tend to want to do that is because the paddle is really difficult to stay straight if you don't come in the water in the right angle. So what happens a lot of people is they come in and the paddle will slip off the side and they'll really struggle to swim with it. And usually people who hate swimming with it are the people who are really going to benefit the most from it because it's really encouraging them to spear that hand out the end. So yeah, these are great just for that purpose of just practicing hand entry, getting that alignment better and improving that alignment. But also with the cutter in the back here, it encourages you just to start to get that kind of uh, vertical forearm and get a little bit of pressure on the, on, the, on the hand here, but without creating a lot of propulsion. So these ones don't, they're not necessarily going to give you uh, much more propulsion than what you maybe have now. It's more about ingraining the right hand entry to set the stroke up later. So these are usually my recommendation to start with if you're new to paddles. You get some strength with them, but it's more about developing that technique. Uh, we'll have a quick look and show you what it looks like swimming with these on. is called the, pre uh, called the Finnish Agility Paddle. And these come in a few different sizes. There's actually a medium one here, uh, by the numbers on there. They go right down to extra small and then up to large. Again, like we said before about paddles, it's really about something that's just round about the same size, if not slightly larger than your hand. Now, what's unique about this is the shape of these paddles and the fact that it's only your thumb that kind of keeps that paddle in. So it does bring a little bit of kind of ideal or optimal hand in position. But if not, if you come in at a slight angle or cross over, the paddle moves about a lot more, which is just giving you that feedback that there's something that you need to fix with that kind of hand end. But what you start to get with these that you don't get with maybe the freestyle paddle is that you start to get a lot more resistance in the water here. You start to get a little bit more pressure. You're starting to feel that water better. 
So you get that surface area engaging with the water, which allows you to really press forward in the water. Um, so these are the kind of next stage up for um, getting a bit stronger, a bit of strength when you're using paddles. And, uh, yeah, I'd sort of recommend these. These are probably my go-to and use most. If you're not sure, maybe start with the size down, build up a bit more strength, and then gradually get to kind of the optimal size. Uh, although the, the thumb hole does get smaller as, as the paddle gets smaller, so you might have a point where your thumb can't, can't fit in there. Um, yeah, the fittest, three -step, uh, fittest jelly paddles are certainly a, a good, uh, good option for developing strength. And I'll show you some video videos from here. With So these are the thinnest ISO paddles, called ISO because they kind of, kind of uh, isolate certain muscle groups depending on which way you have them. So they're kind of uh, bio, bio-directional, so you can have them on either side, so it doesn't matter whether it's your right hand or left hand, but what that does is it depends on which muscle group you want to work, and you do really feel it when you swim with this. So again, middle finger, just like most of the thinnest stuff, just goes through here. So what you've got now is, this is called inside isolation, so it's isolating the muscles on the inside. So where the uh, little protrusion bit here sticks on the outside, what that's designed to do is when I'm swimming, it's now going to work all these muscles up on the inside, so like bicep and chest area more than anything. When I then switch this over and go the other way around, so the protrusion is now on the outside, what that starts to do is work on the outside isolation, so things like the triceps and then my back more than anything. Uh, again, because they're not huge, you don't get huge amounts of resistance, but it's really about isolating those muscle groups and you do really feel these working. And I certainly notice the difference when I'm swimming with these when I go from one side to the other. I always find the outside isolation is harder than the inside isolation predominantly because I swim using more chest muscles rather than necessarily as much of my lats and my back as I should. So um, I tend to prefer the inside, but I need to work more on the outside isolation. So these are just a great little... Uh, paddles just to use to say that the strength is limited on them but really good for just a great and good technique and isolating the muscle groups. Again they come in different sizes so you know extra small right up to large uh, even extra large. So yeah uh, here's a video of uh, showing what these look like. 